It's so good to see you guys. I don't know whether y'all are noticing the distinct difference in the pattern of seating this morning. <laughs> but normally most of you are over here, but today most of you are over here. And I'm trying to figure out what that's all about. It must be the fact that Herb Lesher decided to sit on this side and y'all want to be close to her. Yeah. If, you, if you have a better explanation, then God bless you. If you came looking for God, you came to the right place because I promise you God is here today. He promises he is going to be here. He's been here before. He'll be here today. And I just welcome you. I hope that you will leave this place today feeling a little bit of his love, an injection of his hope, and you'll want to leave this place and go and be nice. It's a great day, great day to be nice. You know, I'm going to recognize somebody who doesn't want to be recognized. He is a pillar of this church. And he walked in the front door today. Now, that doesn't sound like much, does it? Except he's been in the hospital for the last, I don't know, I've lost, I lost track. He couldn't hardly walk, but the day he walked in, he didn't have a cane, he didn't have a walker, he didn't have a wheelchair. Yeah. Y'all can guess who that is. Some, most, of, most of you know, but some of you didn't know this is dude back in the right corner back here. Dude's going to lay down on the pew in about five seconds. <laughs>
for all mothers. For the new ones who endure sleepless nights with infants in arms. For the busy ones who juggle the pressures of home and family life. For the steadfast ones who nurture and care for our special vulnerable children. For the patient ones who always seek to forgive and engage with their preteens. For the persistent ones who cleverly find new ways to connect with their many adults. For the mother aunts who, who step in to cradle and care for nieces and nephews. For all grandmothers who love and support their precious grandchildren. For the foster mothers that are called to gather and cover the fragile ones. For the Sunday mothers who, who care for our children and lead them in faith. And for the mothers who give far beyond their own resources, who overcome disability to cherish and love. Thank you, Lord, for all of our beautiful mothers. Help us to support them, keep them in our prayers, and may you bless them now on this special day. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we would like to, if you'd like to still stay standing, we have a congregational song that we would like to sing. Um, it is Honor Christian Mothers. It is in the tune of Honor. I'm um, sorry. Uh, it's in the tune of Honor Christian Soldiers. So it's a familiar tune. It's definitely a tune. We'll have them up here on the, on the screen.
morning and welcome, welcome to worship. Today is a Sunday set aside for love and appreciation for all of everywhere. This morning, as you enter church, you will get carnation, which is the official flower for this day. You were given carnation to signify a deceased mother or a colored flower to signify a living mother. There are many scriptures in our Bible referring to mother and motherhood. Proverbs 23:25. May she who gave you birth be joyful. Exodus 20, 12, the 12th commandment. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. There's an interesting connection between Mother's Day and the Methodist Church of which you may, may not be aware. Several attempts were made in past years to set aside a day to honor mothers, starting with a movement in 1872 by Julia Ward Howe, who you may know as the founder of the Girl Scouts of America. Several others also attempted celebrations, but it wasn't until 1907 that Anna Jarvis, Grafton, West a campaign for a nationwide observance for Mother's Day. She chose the second Sunday in May and began the custom of wearing a carnation. On Sunday, May the 10th, 1908, the Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia, and Philadelphia held Mother's Day celebration. The service in Grafton, West Virginia, was held at the Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church and honored Anna Jarvis's mother. At the General Conference of this Episcopal Church held in Minneapolis in 1912, a delegation Now, maybe you can hear all the words I've said, <laughs> not just picking up pieces here and there. <laughs> there was a resolution taken to the Methodist Conference, General Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1912, and there was a delegation from the Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church in West Virginia, and they presented a resolution recognizing Anna Jarvis as the founder of Mother's Day. Mother's Day received national recognition on May the 9th, 1914, when President Woodrow Wilson signed a joint resolution of Congress that recommended an annual national observance of Mother's Day on the second Sunday of May. The following year, 1915, it was proclaimed. May we pray. Dear Lord, we lift our hearts in prayer, honoring our mothers and mothers everywhere. We thank God for mothers and strive to love more like they do. Amen. want to join me and I encourage you to do so, I'm going to be reciting, saying the Apostles' Creed, which is 881 in the back of your hymnal. A creed is the statement of beliefs. These are the beliefs of this church and for that matter, many others. Join me if you will. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, 
The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now it's time uh, that we, in tradition, that we set our children off to Sunday school. We need to do that in a song. And so if everyone would like to sing along, I'd appreciate it. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color, every race, all are covered by his grace. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Lowell, for those who have not 
not here. Diana's not here. They're both still sick. And so they should be back here next uh, next week. So I appreciate Joe stepping in to take over for that role. We didn't give him the we didn't give him the option. We just told him he had to do it. I'm just saying yeah. he did it anyway. So uh, thank you, Joe, for, for stepping in. So uh, and I assume that quite a few of you know we have lost a brother. You know, it's been the custom of this congregation to pick a location every week that we lift up in prayer. And this week, the congregation, the congregation, the areas of the world I'm going to lift up is that of Haiti. Haiti had been in the news a lot recently by the news that I watched, but it should have been because gangs are just literally running rampant across Haiti, murdering and killing people and left. Right. It's just a, a lawless world in Haiti. And so let's lift them up in our prayers this morning. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you today believing that you are the creator. You created the universe. You created humans. You created nature. You are all powerful all of and all caring. And God, we are grateful for your presence in our life, for the incredible love that you have for us. Lord, we confess our sin and ask your forgiveness this morning. Bless our many imperfections and teach us to love our neighbor, to love our family, to love our enemies, to love ourselves, and to love everyone. Now join with me as we go to the Lord, saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That as we read the scriptures today, and as the message is proclaimed, that we may hear with joy whatever it is that you want us to hear. Open our ears now, Lord. I want to share with you a parable from Luke 18. It's normally referred to as the parable of the persistent widow. This is a powerful parable. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Jesus said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was in that town a widow who kept <coughs> coming to him with the plea, grant me justice over my adversary. For some time the judge refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think. Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets <coughs> justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Then the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge then said. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who will cry <coughs> out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly, 
However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Prayer works. Will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who will cry out to him day and night? Praying should be as urgent and necessary as breathing. Yet all too often we get bored by it. We get distracted from doing it. We get uncertain about the purposes or results of prayer. We don't sometimes even remember why or how to pray. But listen this morning. We're going to reconnect with those issues. We have many reasons to be excited about prayer. It is the relationship glue that bonds our hearts to the Lord. You saw it in the video. God commands us to pray, and he graciously wants and desires to answer our prayers. As we pour out our hearts to him, we and the world around us will be changed. Simply stated, prayer works. This week has been a hard week for me, and probably for some of you. I've thought about my mom from when I was a kid. My mom was pretty much sick during the entire part of my life when I could remember her. She had cancer. She went through radiation. Back in those days, they didn't really have the skill set or the equipment to do what they do today, so they over-radiated her body and basically injured her lower abdomen. As a result, my mom was short thin, frail, and lived in pain for the large part of her life. And I was also thinking this week, in conjunction with that, about a picture. Appropriate for Mother's Day. It's an older woman, full head of gray hair, staring down at an open Bible on the table. Her glasses are on the Bible. Her hands are clasped. And she's praying. That's a really good image of a mother on Mother's Day. If you want to see that image, it's over in the pantry. It's a picture right above the stove. I don't know who the woman is, and maybe nobody does, but it's a great picture. And I would love to keep that picture in the records of this church as we move into our centennial celebration. Because that is a great, great picture. I looked around this morning, actually a couple times a week, I was trying to find in our stained glass windows picture of hands clasped in prayer. I didn't find that, but I did enjoy looking at the stained glass windows, and I'm betting that most of you have never spent more than a minute trying to do that, but there's some really good pictures, nice pictures, beautiful pictures, inspiring pictures that remind us of our faith and the history of this church. So I, I recommend you do that. For most of us, it was our mothers who taught us our first prayers, our mothers who taught us our first songs, our mothers who taught us a Bible story. And for many of us, we were taught a prayer something like, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. In Jewish culture, they prayed a little bit different song, a little bit different uh, prayer. Father, unto thy hands I commit my spirit, which sounds an awfully lot like what Jesus said on the cross. 
And as we examine the scripture I just read to you, I want to reinforce. <coughs> Jesus told his disciples, always pray and never give up. If you don't hear a thing else that I say this morning, would you kindly remember those five words? That's it. That was that powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Perhaps it could be argued that while Jesus did it teach us that the most important commandment is to love our neighbor, perhaps Jesus is trying to teach us in this parable that the most important thing that we can do is to pray. And the need for having perseverance in that process. Praying for things. Like that grandma's picture that I tried to describe to you. I spend my observation, and looking at a few of you, I can well believe this to be true. Mothers are persistent. If I did a study of all the things that mothers have started or energized or whatever, I am sure it would be a bunch. Things like mothers against drunk driving. Mothers who took on the world because the world sat around and did absolutely nothing until mothers said, you're done. We owe mothers a lot. Mothers are prayer warriors. It's perfectly consistent with that parable, the picture that I described of that woman that grandmother, who was sit, sitting at a table looking down at her Bible and clearly praying. And undoubtedly she was praying for her family. This past Thursday was a day of prayer. That's an important day that does not get the attention, the service that it deserves, including what I could or could not do this particular week, although we've done it before. But I also found out this week at a clergy meeting something that I had not known before. It's recent information and it's not good news. The issue is biggest pillars of people. And you probably guess the first three like this. We got COVID, we got cancer, we got heart disease. You know what number four is? Suicide. That's what I found out this week. That ain't good news. And it's not good news because it means that the church is not doing its job. We need to be out there in our society and tell people you've got a purpose. God loves you. Stay with us. Don't give up. Oh, my Lord, does that tick me off? I bet most of you didn't know that. Because it's not good news. But it's news that we need to understand so that we can put the burden of that issue on our shoulders and carry that out in society and do something about it. Please. 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 But you know the story continues. Military organizations have a problem with suicide. First responders have a problem with suicide. Kids have a problem with suicide. I'm not an expert. But I can hear simple facts and understand that the ramifications are great. Because God wants to love all of those people. And so I had a discussion this week <clears throat> about bringing the 
a speaker in to talk to our young adult ministry, which for us is 20 year old, and make sure that they hear about the issue and they understand who they can talk to because there are people and organizations out there to deal with that. So I'm going to do that. Our young adult ministry meets at the moment on the first and the third Friday nights. And we just decided this past week that we're going to start a worship service on the fourth Friday for young adults. It's going to be designed by them, and they're going to be involved in delivering it, and getting special music for it. So I hope that you will pray about that ministry. And I hope you will understand the truth when I say this church needs to reach that age bracket. Amen? Amen. So please help. In 10 days, I'm going to be going to Mayfield, Kentucky. Most of you are probably saying, what the heck is that? That's a place just south of Paducah. It is a place that was literally wiped out in December by a set of storms and tornadoes that went through there and wiped out everything. And I'm going to be taking some money that I've been collecting up to give to the First Methodist Church of Mayfield, Kentucky, to their pastor, whose name is Joey. And I'm going to be going to their service. But they will be having service at a different church. Because their church wiped out. But I'm going to take up a check to help rebuild that part of the country. Because I want to go because I want my eyes to see and my hands to feel, feel and my ears to hear what's going on in the lives of people. It's one thing to watch a video. It's one thing to watch a picture as you did last week. A masses of humanity trying to get on a train to get out of Ukraine, for those of you that were here. But it's different when you're there, I think. But I want to go, and I want to help, and I want to experience Mayfield, Kentucky. And I want to tell them that we're going to be here trying to help. And I certainly hope that you'll want to be involved with that, as well as other things that we'll be doing. Let me ask you a question. What is your perspective when you pray? Do you believe that your prayer is going to be answered? Do you understand that the God you're praying to is the same God that created the universe? The same God that sent his son? To die on the cross for the salvation that we can enjoy for free? Next month, we're going to watch together, for those of you who want to come, we're going to watch a movie called War Room. War Room is about an old lady. I'm sure she wouldn't mind being called that because she dressed up that way. Her name is Miss Clara. And she has a special place where she goes to pray. To her, praying is waging war against Satan. Great movie. You're going to love it. You dare not want to miss that movie. But you know, God wants us to pray. Do we, do we get that? Hear, hear these words from Psalm. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him. For God is our refuge. Man, that, that is a great piece of scripture. We need to leap at every chance that we get to pray. Pray always. Because prayer works. Scripture just said, let's read it again. What will not God bring about justice? his chosen ones who will cry out to him 
day and night, and I'll give you the answer. Yes, he will. If you read a book on prayer, I can promise you it'll probably talk about the fact that for most of us, prayer is asking God to do something. Give me this. Give me that. Heal me. Fix me. And that's fine. Don't want to hear that. But also prayer is a conversation with God. The, the scripture that I just read, pour out your heart to him. Is a powerful set of words to remember. It's an opportunity to really get close to your God. Because that's what God wants to have happen to you. You look at the Bible, in a multitude of places, you'll find discussions about prayer. Jesus prayed. The disciples prayed. Moses prayed. Abraham prayed. But the biggest person of prayer in the Bible to me was David. If you read through the Psalms, you cannot hardly find a spot where we're not talking about David praying. And one author suggested that, you know, we need to understand that praying in that context was pleading. Pleading. That's an interesting word. Because pleading to me sounds like something I'm just pulling out of my gut. I'm pulling out of my heart. It's not just words. That train picture from last week with those people Mostly mothers, by the way, trying to get their kids onto the train because the dads that were staying there fighting the war. I am sure that those mothers were pleading to God. Have mercy. Have mercy on us, children. Let's look at David for a second. This is in Psalm 142. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out myself, my complaints, before him. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you, O God, who watch over my way. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see there is no one in my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for me. This is David's word. I cry to you, Lord. I say you are my refuge. My portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry. I am in desperate need. That's, that's somebody that's hurting. A lot of what prayer is all about fixing the hurt. But you know, this Mother's Day, I want to remind us of one more important person and the prayer that she prayed. Her name is Hannah. And in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, we find these words. This is Hannah speaking. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. She was talking to the Lord by herself. Hannah is distraught because she is barren. She has no gifts. But she yearns to have one, and she pleads to God for his mercy to allow her to have a child. Maybe there's a family here today, or maybe you know the family, that wanted a kid and couldn't have one. That's Hannah. In her days, 
for a woman not to be able to have a child is a social stigma. Not so much today. The wording of scripture that describes how Hannah was feeling attempts to describe how deeply Hannah is yearning for a child. And when we continue to think about prayer and we remember Hannah, I think it's important to understand that prayer is about heart work. We're reminded in Matthew in two different places, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And in another place, Jesus reflects, says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Prayer is only effective when we have engaged our hearts in the process. Prayer is not just the words that come out of our mouth. In fact, maybe it's got very little to do with the actual words. When we pray, we socially connect or emotionally connect. That happens with God, and it happens with the people you pray about. Try this sometimes. If you're really ticked off at somebody, pray for them. Because when you pray for people that you're not really happy with right now, it changes your attitude and your opinions about who they are, and you begin to see and even like those people in a Christian sense. When we're praying to a God who created the universe, there's power in that. What prayer do you have this morning? What prayer did you bring when you walked through these doors this morning? What tear in the fabric of your spirit needs to be healed because it hurts? You're hurting. You need to fix it. You need to resolve it. I'll be honest with you. My prayer these days is the help of this church and its members. And I need help broad perspective. But I pray about the health of this church every day. Going back to our widow, the widow prayed persistently, but there's another story in the Bible about persistence and prayer. This is in Luke 11. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answered, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, Jesus said, even though he will not get up, give up and get you bread because of friendship, yet because of your, hear this, shameless audacity, that's pretty strong, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, to them the door will be opened. The one who seeks, finds. Be persistent, Jesus is telling us. In our story, 
The widow prayed with persistence. She asked, and then she asked again, and then she probably asked again. She was seeking, and she continued to seek. She knocked, and she kept on knocking, giving up. Hear this. Giving up was not an option. Christians, don't give up, because Christ doesn't give up. You know a story about a guy named Jacob. And you remember in Genesis 32 the story, Jacob is wrestling with God. That's just a whole interesting idea right there, but we'll deal with that another day. And toward the dawn, the man, God, tells Jacob, let me go, for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Scripture suggests that the prayer of faithful people works. In James 5, 14, are any of you sick? Speaking to the church. You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Any Wednesday, 5.30, right here. Clearly, there's an expectation in that scripture that the prayers of the elders will be answered. But not only that, the prayers of righteous people will be answered. Therefore, the effectiveness of your prayers has to be connected to your faith, to the growth and commitment that you have to your faith. Proverbs 15, 29 reinforces that and with these words. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. I remember that. Do you want your prayers to be answered? Do you live your life in a way that would allow God to want to bless you and to answer your prayers? I have a hypothetical question. What if word got out in Lake Elm that the prayers of the people of this church get answered? But praise is also a part of prayer. Even within the confines of the concept of pleading, we can be energetic in our exuberance when we're thanking God for something that God has done for us. And we certainly ought to praise as much as we can. You've heard me say it before, I will say it again. You live in America, you really need to examine yourself if you're not praising your life in America. Certainly when you compare it to many other countries. So I ask you again, does your life reflect a belief that prayer works? Jacob certainly did. He fought God the entire night to claim his blessing. And he got it. The 
the widow kept praying. God answered. James 4 2 continues to work on this idea of having doubt about whether prayer works. So James 4 2 says, You have not because you ask not. Such scripture presents a compelling picture. And it continues in another verse nearby. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Now why would those statements be in the Bible if God wasn't going to answer them? But here's the rub. Here's the bad part. Prayer works. Only if you pray. Our widow prayed and prayed and prayed because she knew that prayer would work. So she prayed over and over again. As the video showed you earlier, and you, I would remind you in Scripture, it says, pray without ceasing. Our widow prayed. She got a response. And Jesus poses that parable with a really interesting question. <coughs> Will the Son of Man find faith when he comes back? Will the Son of Man find a church that is praying? Will the Son of Man find churches that have a vibrant prayer ministry that expects their prayers to be answered? That are so energized by the opportunity to pray that they do so every time they can. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a yellow prayer slip that you have today. And I seriously hope that before you leave this day, that you will fill out that yellow prayer slip, which goes to the prayer team, which is anybody that wants to come on Wednesday at 5.30. Be part of the prayer ministry of this church by filling out those yellow slips so that we can lift those names to God when we pray together on Wednesday at 5.30. In case you want to come on Wednesday at 5.30 that would be. So Jesus and I have mentioned several times today came to offer each one of us the gift of salvation. It is a gift that has to be activated by you. But the only thing it takes to activate your gift of salvation is to say yes. I accept your gift of salvation. And if any of you have not done that today, I hope you will do so today, right now. It is never a bad time. It is always the right time. And it's to your advantage to get into the pearly gates and then join in our ability to pray to a Savior who is sitting there waiting and anxious to listen to anything that we want to say. Happy Mother's Day, but to God be the glory. Amen.
our benediction today. <clears throat> but these words, it seems to me, plate define what most of us see and believe about our mothers. Do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can. In all the places you can. At all the times you can. To all the people you can. For as long as you ever can. Amen. Take care. God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day.